Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. My name is Rebecca and if you're new here, I post videos all about luxury and lifestyle. So if you're into that kind of content, then definitely hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the luxury items I have sold and why. I thought this would be interesting so you can kind of get an idea of how my thinking process was on why these bags or items just didn't work out for me. So if you want to see all the items that I have bought and sold over my luxury journey, then just keep on watching. All right, so I want to say that I haven't really bought and sold a lot of luxury items. However, I do have my reasoning behind the specific items I have bought and sold over, you know, since like 2017. I did get my first Louis Vuitton bag, my first luxury bag in October of 2016. That was my Neverfull MM. And then probably around like 2017, like towards the end, I had started to dabble in buying like pre-loved items. And then, you know, since then I have also bought a new. And there have been items that haven't worked out for me for one reason or another. Now I want to preface this by saying I do have a video on my channel that is all about tips for buying your first luxury bag. Now these tips can apply with any luxury purchase really, it doesn't have to be your first one. And had I thought about these things before getting some of these items, maybe I would have made a different decision. But of course we're all human and sometimes we have to make our own mistakes to learn from them and learn what works for us. But I will link that video down below in case you want to check it out. So the first item I think that I had purchased pre-loved back, you know, after my Neverfull, I believe that, that was the Louis Vuitton Keep All 50. Now I had just bought the regular one, it was not the bandolier version, and this is important because I think if I had gotten the bandolier version, this would have worked out for me. But I ended up purchasing the Keep All 50 from Fashion File, and I did actually take it on a plane trip. Now, I want to tell you um, that it is no exaggeration when I say that was the most annoying traveling experience for me, mainly because of that key ball. And the thing is, I know so many people love the regular key ball, but I think having the bandolier version is like a non-negotiable if you are going to get this bag. And that is because, first of all, um, the key ball 50 that is carry-on size, I personally would never check a luxury luggage item just because I'd be a nervous wreck the entire time. So the 50 and the 55, up to the 55, all can fit in the um, carry-on requirements. So with that being said, a carry-on you are holding with you through your entire time in the airports, you know. So I had, you know, packed my 50, I think. I want to say that was the only bag I had brought. It was a very short trip. You know, it wasn't a very long, you know, it wasn't a very far trip either. It was just a plane right away, one plane. Thank God, because it would have been even worse had it been layovers involved. Um, so I had packed it all with my stuff. I was pretty full. You know, of course, you want to maximize the space when you're bringing on, you know, a carry-on item. That's kind of the whole point. And when I tell you that I was struggling, like, waiting through security and standing in lines, because you have to either just hold it in your hand or you're holding it on the crook of your arm. And when it's something that's relatively heavy, that gets really uncomfortable. I mean, I don't know, maybe that was just me, but I would definitely recommend that if you are thinking about getting this bag, get it in the bandolier. Because with the bandolier, you can still opt and not use the strap and carry it handheld or in the crook of your arm. But you also have the strap as an option to be able to throw cross body or throw on your shoulder so you can be more hands free. So it was just so heavy and so uncomfortable. And obviously, like I said, the whole point of luggage is to pack it. I don't want to get a size 50 and put like three things in it just to make it light. So that ended up not working out for me. I did end up taking a loss on that because Fashion File was definitely overpricing them because you can find them on like, you know, Facebook groups. You can find them for much cheaper than what Fashion File sells them for. So I did end up having to take a little bit of a loss on that, but I was fine. I just wanted to get rid of it because I knew I was never going to use it as a travel bag. Then the next item that I had picked up was the original model of the Montserrat backpack in the GM size. Now I still think this is a gorgeous bag. I really love the look of it. Um, and they have the newer models now and I actually do really like the Montserrat BB. I think that would be the new model and there's a reason for that. I will get into it. 
So, the main reason I did not just do well with the monster backpack was because I found it so annoying to have to get into. So, on the original models of the monster bags, they had a true buckle closure. It, you had to, like, open the buckle, open the bag, pull open the drawstring, and when you wanted to close it, you had to tighten the drawstring and buckle the bag back up unless you wanted just to leave it open with no security. Now, the reason I say I like the new model and I would consider the Montserrat BB is because it looks like a buckle, but it is not. It is actually a snap button. The buckle is just decorative. Now, this makes the bag way more functional, in my opinion, because you just need to pop it open and call it a day. There's no fussing with the buckle. So that was one of the biggest problems with the Montserrat GM backpack that I had, and, that, and having to deal with the drawstring was really annoying as well. Now, granted, like the Montserrat BB, I feel like you can kind of leave the drawstring pulled open enough so that way you're not dealing with it every time. I have tried that bag on in the store and you can kind of leave it a little bit pulled open because it is so small, it's not really going to make it look weird. But if I were to leave the drawstring undone on the GM backpack, it just would have looked really odd and also taken away some of the security. So had that bag had a snap button closure, maybe it would have worked out better for me. At this point in my life, I don't think I really need a jumbo backpack like that. The GM was a pretty big backpack, but you know, back then I was in school. I still am in school, but I don't have to carry stuff around anymore. But back then I was, so it made more sense to have a larger backpack, but at this point I just wouldn't need anything of that size. So let's say it did have a buckle closure, I probably would have sold it at some point over the last couple of years. But I did end up getting rid of that bag. I cannot remember if I took a loss or not. I probably just broke even, I believe. I don't really recall. I feel like I would remember if I took a major loss. So the next item that I believe I purchased pre-loved, again, I'm a little fuzzy on the timeline of some of this, but I ended up purchasing a Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 in the Damien Azur from uh, Poshmark. And first of all, I was really upset because there was a smoke smell to it and that was not disclosed in the listing. And I had already accepted the item before really noticing the smoke smell, which that was my bad. If you are gonna buy anything from Poshmark, make sure you really thoroughly inspect the bag before you accept because once you accept they're not going to do anything for you so that wasn't the problem though i was willing to live with the smoke smell and try to air it out the issue was again it was just a top handle bag this was a regular speedy it was not the bandolier i do now own a speedy 25 in the bandolier version and i absolutely love it i have a video on that bag um on my channel i'll link it down below but the Speedy 30 just just didn't work for me because I hated having to hold a top handle or having the crook on my arm. I really, really do like the look of that. Like, you know, top handle, it's so cute, or even the crook of your arm. I carry my Speedy 25 like that sometimes. But I like having the option of a strap because when I'm doing something in the grocery store or if I'm doing something in a store, I want to be able to have both of my hands free. I find it very annoying only having a top handle. So that is really the only reason that that bag didn't work out for me. And again, I ended up going for the 25 size because I really just didn't need the 30. However, I do think the 30 is a nice, like, sweet spot, you know, between the 25 and the 35. I do think the 30 can hold a ton because my 25 holds a ton, so I know the 30 will hold a lot. So I do think that's a great option. Just I would definitely recommend going for the bandolier version, even if you think you don't want to use the strap. Just get it because you can take the strap off and still carry it as a top handle. So you're not really losing anything by getting the strap version, except the fact that the strapped version is a little bit more money. So that was the other item that didn't work out for me. And now, you know, through these experiences, I will never buy another top handle only bag. I have learned that I need the option of throwing it on my shoulder. So, you know, sometimes you have to just learn these things through trial and error. Because if you watch a lot of videos on the key balls and the third, or the speedies without a strap, people love them. So it all is personal preference too, you know. I see people out on the street with just the regular speedy and they seem fine with it, you know. So it all is personal preference. Then the next item that I, I'm going to actually go, I'm going to talk about some more recent items and then we're going to go back and talk about a little like duo of items. So the first item that I did um, buy and sell, actually these were both happened in 2021. 
So I ended up purchasing the Louis Vuitton Clemens wallet. I have videos um, on that on my channel. And I really did like the wallet. However, the only reason it didn't work out for me, well, two reasons. One, I really did find getting in and out of the zipper kind of annoying, which if you actually watch my Clemens unboxing, I think I even mentioned this, but I knew this about myself. I much prefer a snap versus a zipper when it comes to my wallet. But I was like, eh, what the heck, I'm different now. I will probably like it wrong. I did find it annoying compared to using like my Victorine wallet or a card holder, which are so easy to get in and out of. Not saying the Clements wallet is difficult to get in and out of. The zipper was smooth. There was no problem there. It's just, you know, unzipping a zipper takes a little bit longer than just opening a snap. So that was the only reason that one didn't work out for me. And I did end up selling it and I did take a little bit of a loss, but I really wasn't that upset about it because I did use it for like a month before I sold it. And the other reason that that mainly didn't work out for me was because I just found myself always wanting to use my compact wallets. You know, my Victorine wallet is a compact wallet, but it holds the same as like a full-size wallet, especially compared to the Clements because the Clements is on the smaller side of full-size wallets. If you want a big full-size wallet, you would go for like a Zippy versus the Clements. But the Clements did hold a ton, and it, like I said, the Victorine held about the same, so I just found myself really wanting to use my Victorine or my card holders, just because they are much easier to put in every bag that you have. Then the other item that I bought this year and sold this year, actually very recently, is the Louis Vuitton Felici in the bicolor on prompt. Now, this is a really tough decision for me, and I actually wasn't going to sell it if I had to take a loss on it. But I didn't. I ended up making like 20 bucks on it, which is not a lot, but it wasn't a loss, even after tax. So I ended up selling it because I just found, number one, I was really scared of the light color leather. I think if I would have gotten this in even a canvas, even if I got this in the Azure canvas, maybe I would have felt a little bit differently. But also for functionality, I just... It just wasn't really doing it for me. Whenever we would go out, you know, I would tend to want to grab my Gucci Marmont, which is bigger than a Felici. So I did like the compact size of the Felici versus my Marmont. But just for ease of use, I just always was wanting to reach for my Marmont bag. And yes, you can stuff the Felici and fit your essentials. And I, I believe I even showed that in my video um, that I'll link below. It's just I'm not one to want to overstuff my bag. And the other thing was when I was using my Chanel card holder with it, I was so nervous about putting too much in that I would be pressing on the card holder because I didn't want to cause unnecessary damage to that either. I didn't want to cause damage to the bag or the items in the bag. So overall, I just decided, look, if I can make a little bit of money on this, even if it's minor, as long as I'm not taking a loss, even if I break even, I was like, if I can break even or make money, I will go ahead and sell it. If not, I will keep it and just keep it as like an occasional use bag. I do think it's a very beautiful style. However, I don't think I will actually ever buy it again. Now, never say never, you know, who knows. But I just don't think that that bag is really suited for me personally. I'd rather get like a small classic flap or something like that that is smaller but can hold more, you know. The thing with the fleecy is it's very flat, so you're not going to fit a whole lot in there compared to bags that have a little bit more width. Then the last items that I have purchased and sold multiple times are the Louis Vuitton Agendas. So I ended up purchasing the GM Agenda off of Poshmark years back when I first like fell in love with the Louis Vuitton planners. And I did use it for a little while, but I ended up finding myself just not really loving the ring system. At that time, I just... I couldn't really find a flow that worked for me, which sounds stupid, but I ended up getting into like Erin Condren planners and I found those a little bit more functional, but now I have since gone back and I own the GM again. I purchased a new from Boutique this year, and while I still, I, I do, I am a lot more better, I'm, I am better <laughs> with the ring bound system now than I was back then, but I do still see some of the cons that I had felt back when I first owned the GM, and that is mainly the weight of it. And it is a big planner. It is heavy when you have it full. But I do enjoy using my GM as like a stay-at-home planner, whereas back then when I had owned the GM before, uh, I wasn't living with my boyfriend, so I was constantly going back and forth a lot, and I needed to have my planner with me you know, every day so I knew what was going on in my life. And it just was not as convenient to carry around. 
So I ended up selling it and then I ended up purchasing a pre-loved Emma Magenta. And I have actually purchased a brand new Emma Magenta that I ended up returning to the boutique. And now I even have the MM on my wish list again. I know, I'm insane, but hear me out. The main reason I didn't like the MM agenda was because I didn't like the inserts being so narrow. In my opinion, the MM agenda is actually the perfect size agenda for, you know, being able to still do your everyday planning. Like for a whole year, you can keep a ton of inserts in it. Um, and it's, it's easy to carry around, you know, you can, it's not going to get as heavy as the GM, you know, I just think it's the perfect size, but the inserts were too narrow. However, I did find a video recently where, and I will link it below because she's the only one I have seen talk about this, and she was using B6 inserts, but hole punched for personal size. And the thing with that is they are a little bit shorter than the traditional personal inserts, but they are also wider, but they still fit inside the agenda because I believe they do make personal wide inserts, but those do not fit. They are too wide for using the MM Agenda. So again, the, when I had first purchased the MM Agenda pre-loved years back, I also was running into the issue of not really having a groove going with the ring bound system. I was all over the place with inserts. I didn't really know how to organize it, so it was a little bit discouraging. So that was kind of another reason why back then I had let it go. And then when I purchased a new MM back in 2020, like the beginning of it, I was mainly just hesitant about using it. Like, I was so nervous about, you know, ruining it somehow, but, and also again, the inserts, I really just wasn't jiving with how narrow they were. But now I have since added it back to my wish list, even though I own the GM and the PM, I really do want to get the MM because I have kind of a specific idea in mind for what I would use it for. Um, at this point and that would probably be budgeting slash like cash envelope system and I would still continue to use my GM as like my at-home planner um, and then of course over the years I could go back and forth and use you know let's say I want to use my MM this year you know then I could use my GM next year the beauty of having a ring bound planner is that you can kind of switch it up and decide how you want to use it at any given time versus like a traditional you know you go to the store and buy a planner that's it, you're using it as a planner and you're going to throw it away at the end, or if you keep them, you would keep it. But you're not actually going to be able to reuse it like you can a ring-bound agenda. So I will say I do want to get the end of the agenda again and complete my trifecta and, you know, use it for a specific purpose and try it out with the B6 inserts hole punch for personal size. The reason I say that is because in the video, she was saying that if you buy B6 inserts that are hole punch to go in a B6 binder that it will not work. You have to get them unpunched and have them punched for personal size. So anyway, that is all of the luxury items I have purchased and sold over the years, over the last like what, five years, four or five years. Now I pretty much do have a good idea of the things that do work for me. And you know, I, I think a little bit differently now when I go to make a luxury purchase compared to how I did back then. You know, a lot of times before I would just fall in love with what was, you know, hyped or what I had seen on social media, but now I kind of feel like I know personally what works for me and what doesn't. So that definitely makes a big difference and hopefully I won't continue to make luxury purchase mistakes. And again, I don't find these to be really like, like terrible mistakes. I got to enjoy the bags a little bit and use them or, you know, the items that I have sold. So it's not, it's not a big deal. I've gotten to enjoy them. I've gotten to learn more about what works for me and that's, the whole point and the whole fun of trying out different items. So let me know in the comments down below what is a luxury item that you purchased and sold and why. I want to know what was the determining factor for you to get rid of something that you had in your collection. And definitely don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this one all about luxury and lifestyle. I would love to have you here as part of my little YouTube family. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!